Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Deaths, back with another Reblist video. Now, the thing with this game, I do have to point a few things out. For one, I'm probably not going to do any tier list with this game because of the fact that there have been characters that have changed compared to the Japanese version, so I have no idea who's the best now. And then on top of that too is the fact that there are a lot of other differences as well. If I was to say how things really are, this is definitely a lot harder than the Japanese version because of the fact that there's so many changes that actually like made things quite a bit harder. Like if I go into my lineup, SSR does not have three skills. They only have two. So that that alone is already a big change. But um more so, I found it a lot harder to get stuff on this version compared to the previous one, and then there's also some quality of life things that have changed. I've also found out that it's much, much harder to get your, um, your promotion stuff, so there's that as well. But me personally, I've still managed to grind out quite a lot of stuff to begin with, so that did help me out, because I did hit VIP 6, and you don't necessarily need to be higher VIP to grind. It just makes it a lot easier because you get way more refills. But, um, speaking of which, the one thing I should tell you out the gate, always, always clean out the stamina potion refills because that's going to be the biggest bulk of your grind because potential is going to spike you a lot. I think, well, not potential, I mean, um, promotion. Although potential spikes you a lot too, so that's another thing you can consider getting if need be, but I wouldn't worry about potential stones too much, I would just grind them out normally. But, and speaking of which too, in order to really grind out potential stones, you gotta fight the world boss, and I haven't fought him yet right now, so I'm kinda waiting on that. But, yeah, potential stones are gonna be very, very powerful for you. Equipment, once you hit a certain point, you'll hit a brick wall with, um, Tower of Trials, so you'll be able to get the SR stuff, but not the SSR. I'm still haven't gotten 100 stars. I think the most I've gotten is 87 so far. And keep in mind, I'm at, like, 13 million power and still can't get 100. But, um, yeah, once you get your, um, SR and above equipment, like, just... I wouldn't even go so far as to getting these versions of the refined stones, because the other ones are better. But you can indeed get these, it's just the fact that the other ones are just way, way more beneficial. Because they're like, literally double strength. And more or less the cost of these is like on par, because it's like 5 for that one. And then this one's 10, and you notice how it costs double that. But then this is 25, and it's literally like 2.5 times stronger. So it's not really a waste to get them. It's just I feel it's better to get the stronger ones, if need be. But if I really wanted to, I could drop enough in order to get these and probably these as well. The only reason I'm saying to get the strongest ones whenever you get the chance is to save up for when these SSR ones pop up. Because you need 40,000 on this in order to buy one outright. And considering that you have six characters, or at least six, because you could still make more, but at least six characters, that is literally 240,000 if you haven't gotten SSR equipment bad in. So you're going to need to rack up quite a lot. And then you're, preferably you get the ones that each character wants as well, because that's something I've been doing with my lineup. Like, if you notice, I've been doing a little bit of equipment syncing to try and get them some of the best stuff. Like, notice how she's got the SR versions of that stuff, but she can't get the SSR versions yet. But matching these up has given her a nice little equipment shackle boost, so you notice, like, bonus attack, bonus defense, bonus HP, and so on. When she gets the better stuff, that's when I can start doing, like, a bit higher boost is like an extra 2%, but the equipment itself is a lot stronger because 
SSR will easily outclass SR equipment. And you can do that with the accessories. The accessories are easier to get compared to the other ones as long as you're diligent with robbing treasure. Refining them is a hard part because you need to get duplicates. So that's why my refinements aren't all that great on accessories. Speaking of which, those refined stones I mentioned is how I got these up there so much. I try to refine them evenly so I get the ref refinement bonus except for the weapon. Because I want my teams to do more damage. So there's that. But basically when you get even refinement levels like every two I, I noticed and you'll get a bigger boost. I don't know about the accessories though just yet. I don't know if that's still two or if it's just one. I haven't really paid full attention to that one. But this is a big reason why you want to get your refill potions because you're going to farm these a lot. And I do mean a lot. Worse off, you're going to farm these quite a bit. And as you notice, I've cleared all of these out. These little purple stones where you can only do like five runs a day before you have to reset. They are going to drop equipment. Even, um, even potential SSR stuff too when you get later in the storyline. But these purple stones are also locked behind them, and they'll be the hardest to get. So, yeah, that's a problem. You're going to want to farm um, the fourth item a lot more than the other three. But you'll still want to up everybody, because notice how I got, like, I got promotion rank 5 level 1, rank 5 level 2, rank 5 level 1. She's got level 3, because I focused on her a little bit more. Level 2, level 1, but they're all, like, rank 5. So they all got a very good rank boost to both themselves and the entire team. I'm in fact about to get another team spike right here. But these ranks can get absurd. And you notice that when you start getting the really high promotion points, you'll start needing a lot more stuff. And you can really start spiking like stuff like HP and attack and all that. Like look how much HP she gets for, off of this. And then look how much attack she gets off of this. That's in that 7, 8 digit mark. So stats will start spiking. Again, you will need to farm. Quite a lot. Now, team formations can also matter too. Because now that I got like multiple dragons. I end up getting a boost off of that as well. So there's that. However, Personally speaking, I wouldn't worry about type too much unless you're really invested into a lot of characters of that type. Because at the same time, she's still one of the really good ones in my opinion because she can has a chance to just keep spamming her ultimate. And then Alice can start racking up damage the more debuffs you start landing. So if you got quite a few debuffers, like I got her and her, they both can land bleed, which is pretty powerful. That's also spiking Alice's damage as well. So... It depends on your preferences. I've seen I've seen a character where she can do a lot of single target damage, especially if the HP is high, so she'll so she'll try to kill stuff out the gate. And she's actually kind of annoying to fight in the arena too. But the thing is building more than six characters is tricky. And also if you want to build another character but don't want like say you don't want to use one character and then you gotta try and build up another one, that's where the rebirth thing would come in, because if you go into the recycle page and then hit rebirth, you could do that. However, the problem is when you try to um when you try to do it as a 50 um diamond cost, and diamonds can get pretty tight in this game. Even even worse when you um spend because then you got more refills and therefore more diamonds. But um Yeah, it's kinda like a counter to getting fast progress, but even still like I said, the higher VIP, the more stuff you tend to to get for stuff. Like, they'll even outright give you things as a bonus. So there's that. Like, this is what happens if I get the next VIP. So, there you go. But, um, the thing about that, too... It sounds like my fan's whirring in the background for around this laptop. But, aside from that, too, I haven't really stocked up on, um these energy potions, so that's why I haven't used this SR accessory orb, because when I do, I get to pick one of these at will. So I can just finish that off. Favor is how you get scenes, I shouldn't really talk about that too much. When you get strong enough, martial competition is going to be a very big one, because that shop is going to lead to the morph thing. 
And if you haven't gotten the 150 um, keys for the seven opening days, you will have to go and get Jessica's morph card on your own. Same time, I'm still going after Julia because she's got like a SP thing and a stun. But Jessica's the one I was talking about that does a lot of huge damage out the gate. There's there's a few of them you can really choose from, but aim for the SSR ones more, more than likely. Aim for the SSR ones. They're harder, but well, well worth it. Now, something else I should mention too, like in the main story. And I did just get another star reward, so I got more diamonds. Star rewards seem permanent, so you just need to try and collect as many stars as you can to start getting stuff. But, something with this... I would suggest going through this one time and watching how things play out for your characters, so you can rearrange your formation as such, because this is not how I had these guys lined up. My healer was in the back for one. But because she's got more HP, she's able to tank these hits a lot better than others. So those strong single target hits should can start absorbing those. And then Alice is second highest, and I noticed that this guy tends to do them quite a bit too. So there's that as well. But that's how I say you should do it. And then on top of that too, I noticed that the skip function kind of works against you. So, my suggestion to you is to just let it play out on its own normally, and then see what happens there. Because skipping for some weird reason is, like, worse than just doing it normally. And then, on top of that, too, is the fact that when you start seeing enemies die off, skip starts working a little bit more in your favor. Because for some weird reason, and this is just my take on it, it goes off of who's on the field, and then it kind of ignores a lot of stuff that could probably happen, like, say a dodge could happen, or anything like that. It It's weird, but you do tend to win a lot more often and even get more stars if you let fights play out. And that even works against other players, too, because there's a few times where I skipped and couldn't beat them, but then when I let it play out... I suddenly beat them. So, that's just how it is. But, that's all I can really suggest for that one. When enemies start dying out, that's when I'll probably start, like, skipping this. Like, say there's only, like, three or four left, I'll probably skip it. And then, I also get skills to help me out, too. Like, I got two healing skills that pop up that'll keep me alive a little bit longer. One of which can deal damage to enemies as well. And then I got this one in the middle that can deal with damage to enemies and do... I forgot what the debuff was. But, um, I can't click on it in order to see. But now that I've put, basically, characters the way I did, I should three-star this. So, there's that. Especially since my healer has almost 5 million HP and everybody else is somewhere around, like, 3 million or so. Or 3.5 million. So, she's absorbing all the hits, and therefore, I'm capable of pretty much taking these guys out. Like, at this point, I can skip. There you go, three stars. Now, I can grind that out normally, which I'm going to do, and I just sweep it. Because without three stars, you can't just straight sweep. You'll have to sweep one at a time, which is, like, annoying and time-consuming. I also try to save up some diamonds and try not to refill on certain things, like, for instance... I will not try to refill on anything that's like player versus player content, and I just try to do it normally. And then, I will refill a little bit on the invaders, because that gives you like a half-off cheapness type refill. It's not active now, but it was active a few times. World Boss is a big one to try and refill on because of the potential stones, but I still wouldn't do it too much because Auction House is where you get some of your stuff. And getting things like these, like I managed to get past the scales, but getting things like these dragon teeth, you need to stock up on diamonds in order to buy it outright instead of having to deal with bidding. Because, one, people don't try to bid. They, they will just outright buy it. And then two, even if you do decide to bid and, it's, and a random person decides to bid as well, then well, suddenly you're going to just be out of luck. So, there's that. But, 
even still look I can now enhance her so I can put that on her or I can put that on her I'd rather put it on her because she's got like less stats well not necessarily less stats but you get what I mean she's got like less HP because her CP is like 1.8 and then hers is like 1.5 but she's got way more health so she'll survive better but now that that's done my lineup is normally this And then I could go back in and show you the skill like yeah see it makes my team take less damage but also deal with damage to enemies well chances make them take less damage which isn't much but it helps and some of the buffs and debuffs tend to do that now I haven't even gotten some characters too so I can even activate a few of these otherwise she'd probably get a much much bigger spike like in her case, that's why her CP is so high up because she's got all of them activated. And then so does she. But CP will definitely spike, guys. So it just takes time to try to get stuff and whatnot. Now, for Tower Trial, yeah, I did get 87. I left this here because I can get another SSR accessory. So if I do rack up the damage, I can get that. Some deals aren't bad, some deals are. It depends, but me personally, I do try to go after the SSR stuff, including accessories, because you will need duplicates in order to start enhancing them, so good luck. And then the other thing I mentioned too was a Rob Treasure thing. I don't care too much about the, the R accessories and all that too, but going into it, there's two things. I noticed that these tend to be actual players, the top two, where it says very high probability even on, on harder stuff, or like higher probability than just going down here. If there's a quick rob button, then I don't think it's a player, I think it's just a random bot you can just steal from. But for um, the actual players, that's where you gotta go up against their teams and whatnot, obviously. And you probably do steal stuff from them as well, but me personally... I only take what I need, even though you could just farm this and start getting a lot of accessory experience. But I, if I have anything that's S or above, I try to claim it, especially the SSR stuff because you'll need five of those, and if you don't truce, you can see your stuff vanish. So I would definitely try to focus on them. However, it can take a lot of attempts, so you do need quite a few potions just to even make an SSR accessory, so that's why I would save up on potions, if possible. And then Arena, I've managed to climb my way up quite a lot, actually, but I'm still nowhere near some of these guys. Like, look, 30 million and you're sitting in 18th. I'm pretty sure you should be higher. <laughs> but, um, honestly... Whenever you get the chance, you could try to climb the ranks and all that, but uh, good luck. Because these guys are typically quite, quite strong. Like, look at him. Like, halfway to 100 million. And it does give you some extra stuff, too. Like, I've gone in the honor shop, and I managed to, like... You can get these breed stones for stats, but I'm t tending to focus more on the character shards like this, because that gives you the biggest boost. Getting stars to give you the biggest boost, and then characters will also change their appearance once they get enough stars, so there's that. But, um, I try to aim for stars for characters I need a little bit more with the honor shop, but you can do it either way. But when you unlock one of these, that's where it really gets good. I need to somehow squeeze my way into top 10 before I can get anything else. That's not happening anytime soon. Guild shop... It's a mix of both for me because sometimes I will need these evolution stones to catch up and that's when I buy those. Otherwise I wouldn't worry about it too much. However, refining stones and potential stones, definitely worth it if you can sit up and actually, like if your guild's high enough level, get those. Especially potential stones. They are, I could say potential stones are probably the second largest stat boost in the game next to getting stars. Speaking of which, I'm about to drop on this. And get these because I can get guild medals pretty easily and like I said I broke down equipment courage I tend to just save it for these SSR accessory orbs there is no 
real point to doing anything else, because these chests let you pick, this is going to give you something at random. And you kind of don't want to play RNG. Now, you can get twice as many of these compared to these accessory orbs, but me personally, I go after the chest looking item, so I can pick them on my own. And then world boss, like I mentioned, I would honestly say the potential stones are bigger than trying to get these shards, unless there's some characters in here that you really want to try and boost, like Carlotta, I was trying to beef up quite a bit, she needs so many um, shards now. And then Marshall Shop, again, SSR only, eventually you'll unlock the ability to start getting these things. I don't worry about these certificates either, because they are a decent boost, but quite frankly, I find it more important to just drop on these uh, morph cards, because the morph cards will be far more useful. It turns your maid into one of those characters. So. And then, of course, daily dungeons, do as much as you can. I can't beat the strongest version of this um, potion one for some reason, even though I'm much higher CP, which is weird. But, um, there's that... Eventually, you'll be able to unlock other stuff as well. But Morsha Competition is a big one because the more cards are going to be pretty handy. It's literally like the only way you'll change your mate. And then, of course, Tower Trial because it gets you equipment. That's all I can really say for that one. But, um... Anyways, other than that, stay on top of your quest because you want to get this. You want to get this. Anyways, that's all for this. More of this is going to come soon at some point. Again, this is a harder version, but it's still doable. You see how far I've gotten. I mean, granted, I did put money towards the game, but I've still gotten pretty far. Plus, I did play the original version of this, so I got at least some knowledge on what to do. Which is why I made this video and the previous one. But this is more just a progress update and then saying a few things of how I got here. Because look, I'm at 13 million and still climbing. I'm getting like 500k to a million every single day just from farming up potions. Like the refill stamina potions and then start beefing up the promotions. And then like I said, potential gets you such huge boosts. It's like 6% for um every increase and your skills get stronger too i do believe like it will start increasing the skill damage too so yeah but the other thing details is how you get the scenes like for instance i should be able to get yeah i can get her scene out right if i want to but i'm not doing that on camera but that's how you get the scenes you'll start racking up scenes once you start farming um like stones for promotions but anyways that's all for this and last thing I can give you for advice you may want to use your own um, diamonds in order to refund your stuff when you upgrade your equipment so whenever you're ready to upgrade your equipment save up 50 diamonds for that so you can refund all of those refined stones you tend to dump into this and get them back for your your um higher rarity equipment so, that's something to keep in mind. And it's not like I don't have any, because I got two. And I managed to match these, because you know, set bonus. Which is why I did that. Which is how her HP got so high. But yeah, I did do that for set bonus. Everybody else is still rocking SR stuff, but they're still... They're still holding their own to an extent. But, um, anyways, again, that's all... Expect the Kamihime project video up next because I'm going to end up making that after I upload this. I've already recorded it, I just need to do some editing work. And you'll see how things tested out between the different um, ways to take on the UE boss, at least in my case. But like I said, people should test that out on their own. But um, anyways, that's all for now guys. More comes soon and take care.